Hey guys, CB Super. The CB Super Alpha Glow is uh, finally out. If you want, the link is down in the description. If you want to go ahead and download it, it's a free download, uh, or you can just go over to my website, uh, cbsuper.com. It'll be right here on the uh, the Learn Visual Effects page, which is the home page. And under free stuff, uh, you can go ahead and pick it up. All you got to do is click on this Alpha Glow, and it'll it'll take you to a link. And you just go ahead and download it. If you're interested, there's also the Snow Tool, um, a couple free shock waves that I made. Uh, you can get that paint trace or the water fast noise tool. All right, so that being said, uh, I'm going to show you how to use it real quick. What I intended for its main purpose to be. So here's the thing that I've learned is since creating it, although I created it for a specific purpose for myself, I have found that um, I use it all the time in other ways that I didn't really think that I would use it. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So I'm just in a regular comp here. And I have a stock visual effect from the Shockwaves pack in the uh, Triune Digital Infinity. Um, and I purchased it myself. Uh, there's no there's no connection between me and Triune or Film Riot or anything. Um, I just really like these visual effects and I use them all the time. So, so this is the effect. Um, one thing we'll notice is that there is some white and there's some gray. There's no coloration to it, so we, we're going to have to colorize it. Um, and also you'll notice that it is on a black background. So let's go ahead and pull up the alpha tool, which is, it's really a macro. And if you download it inside the description here in this video, it'll show you how to upload that macro into your macro folder. To pull it up, all you gotta do is shift space, type in CBA. It's probably the only one that's gonna come up. It's gonna be the CB alpha glow. Go ahead and bring it in. By default, it's set to this uh, this purple, and that's just so you remember that, unless it's the color you're looking for, you'll remember that. I do have to come in here and I gotta change the glow color. Um, so right away, and let's go ahead and dual screen this so we can kind of see the before and after. It has taken the brighter parts of this effect and it has colorized them, added a glow, but it's also, if we go to the alphas here, you'll notice that it's also created an alpha. But one thing it also did is it created a glow around the alpha. So the glow is actually affecting the alpha, not just the image. Um, and that's kind of important. We've cut out the background. It automatically does that. Uh, it also adds a glow to the brightest parts of your image. And then it also creates an alpha. So it does a few different things. Because it does a few different things, it can sometimes get a little heavy and run a little bit slower. You can always bump it down into proxy mode and go to, say, half resolution if, uh, if it starts to bog down on you. And you can also come over here and you can click off of high quality. That'll help make it run a little bit smoother. This is actually like a 4K image, so I had to render it into a smaller proxy uh, at, at 1920 by 1080 just to get it to not bog down my specific PC. So inside of the Alpha Globe, we'll kind of take a look at these settings over here on the right. And you'll see there's a lot of settings, but they're, they're kind of grouped up into what they do. So this first group is all about the Alpha. So one thing I like to do is I actually like to uh, take a look at the alpha while I'm adjusting it. So as we boost up the alpha gain, you'll notice that you're just making all of the bits a bit brighter. Um, you can also do some lift and that will again make it even brighter. You can gamma down if you want to cut some things out. Uh, same with the brightness. You can play with the brightness to get different looks. If some of this stuff, usually if the alpha gain is too bright, you can always uh, bring it down a little bit and now you're gonna get a little bit more of the wisp and less of the hot bright whites. Alpha brightness generally will increase the brightness of everything and you'll start to add glow to parts that maybe you didn't want glow. So play around with these settings um, by all means. Try to get an effect that works for you. Uh, the nice thing is that I tried to leave in as many sliders as possible um, so you would have as much control. It, it got to the point where I had, this was nothing but sliders. So um, I had to cut some out. I think I left a good amount of uh, control inside of this tool. All right, so that's that. Um, of course, down here, you can come down to the color type. You can choose whether you want a solid color or a gradient. I usually leave it on solid color. You can easily just change the color of the glow turn this back so you can kind of see the original. You can come down here and uh, once you get past the alpha, it's all pretty much just glow. So there's a soft glow, an outer glow, a strong glow, and a screen glow. These three are on by default because I figured that's probably the way most people use them, um, but you can always turn these down if they're too strong. And you can kind of see individually what does what and you can just kind of play around with that. I'm not gonna dive too much into how I think you guys should use it because you guys are more than welcome to use this however you want. 
You can also come in here and you can modify anything to suit your needs. If there's too many sliders in here, just take them all out. That's fine. Um, once you guys download it, you can do whatever you want with this. The only thing I ask is that you don't redistribute this as your own macros all. So screen glow, um, this is kind of a neat function and I know I've used it in some of my tutorials. What it does is it takes whatever color you have up here and it applies a slight glow to the screen, the entire screen, but it won't increase the brightness of your actual uh, effect. Um, that's actually alpha out. So it's kind of cool. Uh, by default, it only goes up to 0.25, but of course, if you want it to be brighter, you can. You can go all the way up to one. Uh, I just I set it at 0.25 just because I thought that's as high as uh, I would ever probably use it. Um, and by default, the screen glow is turned off. The nice thing about screen glow, though, is that you can animate it using keyframes. And so when this effect comes on, you could uh, animate the screen glow. You could even animate the brightness of the screen glow. And then as the, the effect wears off, you can turn the screen glow off. Uh, I tried to make this an automatic thing, unfortunately. Um, in order to do that, I would have to get into a little bit more expressions and scripting. And uh, in order to get this out in 2019, uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and just release it as is. There may be a version 2 that comes a little bit later. And to be honest, if you guys have any recommendations on things that you would like to see in this tool, please leave it down in the comments. And if I can accommodate it, I will. If I think it's something that I want to integrate into the tool, I absolutely will try. I'm not going to take everybody's comments, but so you can turn the, the core size up and down and you can kind of see what that's doing. You can add core blur, which gives it a slightly bur blurred effect on the actual core itself. You can change the apply mode for the core, which is kind of cool. So if I want to leave it at normal and then maybe turn it to like a red color, now you'll see that the core is red and everything else is still that same uh, glow effect. And so what's kind of important about this is that you can actually colorize different parts of your effect if you wanted to. So that might be a little bit strong. You can always blend that down to get, uh, and this is kind of what I did in that meld video. I wanted to just make kind of like a, uh, like a cell effect or like an amoeba effect. So I just kind of colorize that. By default, uh, these are all set to lighten. I usually leave this at white because that is how I usually use this the most. And then down here, uh, there's an actual global opacity. You can turn this effect on and off. And one neat thing is that you can colorize this and then you can actually take your original media and go ahead and bring in a merge node and you can uh, merge it back in and let's go back to one screen and now you'll see what we've done is we've retained up oh, you actually have to screen it on or you can you can either screen it on or you can uh, just use a uh, lighten effect and what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring back all of the the original image but it's only gonna screen on certain parts of it so if you want to come in here now and you start to bring down the glow effects or you maybe want to just colorize certain parts of your of your effect image you can do that you can get some really different effects inside of just using this one node, which I thought was kind of neat. So play around with it. Um, one thing you'll notice is that it's a very heavy glow. So if you guys are really into just like a glow that you could not get in any other way without stacking glow effects, which is what this has done. What we've done here is we have stacked several different glows into this one glow. So if you, if you come over here and you click on here, you'll notice there's 24 different tools inside of here. But I think that you guys may be able to use this and come up with uh, ways that I've never even imagined. There's other things that you can do with this that I think are pretty cool. Um, let me go ahead and just delete this. So let's take a look at this ellipse. If you look into the ellipse, if you look into the ellipse, the ellipse is essentially an alpha because it's white here and uh, and it's on black. So if I was to use the alpha glow on here, it would essentially take the entire alpha now and it would glow that. Um, so keep that in mind when you're using it. If you're going to plug an ellipse or some kind of mask directly into it, it's going to plug it in as an image. And one thing that it's doing is it's taking whatever the image is and it's creating its own alpha because it's running it through a bitmap and it's running it through um, a couple different nodes that are going to basically adjust the threshold so that the the brighter parts are, are, are more visible and the darker parts are kind of binned and thrown away. But when you're using something that's pure black and pure white and has its own alpha, it's going to consider that and it's going to say, okay, it's pretty much all of this. And so that alpha will almost always turn into the actual core glow. 
So that's just something to take into consideration. So that's it. Uh, that's the CB Alpha Glow. It's finally out. You guys can go ahead and pick it up. And I hope it works out for you guys. If uh, if you have any problems with it, please let me know. Uh, this is something I'm going to be refining over probably 2020. So um, if you guys like it, you know, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, Put it through its paces. Let me know if you guys run into any bugs. If you guys use it in any of your projects, you know, I'd love to know and I'll, I'd like to go check it out and see it in the wild. So, all right, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.